special family, welcome back to another video. So based on the AITA um, story from yesterday, I realized that this is a very important and ongoing topic that I wanted to discuss with you guys. If you're new here, hi, I'm Autism Mom, and on this channel, we talk about autism and everything in between. If you'd like to be part of the family, click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. So today's topic is custody or care. Parents surrender kids to state for mental health treatment. So this is an article from news.wosu.org. In Ohio, parents of children with severe mental health issues sometimes face an excruciating decision to get their child costly care that must sign over custody to the state. Now those parents are fighting for a change and a chunk of Governor Mike Dewin's budget. As a child, Andrew Butler was diagnosed as nonverbal autistic with a severe intellectual disability. When he had outbursts, his dad, Mark Butler, would wrap his arms around his son. Now, Andrew is 6'2 and more than 200 pounds. Oh, my word. Holding him isn't an option anymore. No, it ain't. Experts told Butler when Andrew is acting out, run. That's it? Run? I remember one Thanksgiving where he was having this outburst right in the middle of Thanksgiving dinner. I be eating my food. Not if I slept over that plate all day. I'm sorry. And our evacuation plan was everybody run to the basement and lock the door, Butler says. Oh my goodness. I remember that Thanksgiving. I didn't move. I thought it's Thanksgiving. I'm going to eat my Thanksgiving dinner. And I got hurt pretty bad. Oh. Andrew would hit his family members, punch holes in the wall, bite himself and others. Social workers told Butler that Andrew needed to be put into a residential treatment center to balance his medication and unlearn his violent behavior. But Medicaid wouldn't pay for it. Why am I not surprised? Nor would Butler's private insurance that left the family with only one option. The only way to get him that care that he needed was to call our children's services agency, Butler says. And ultimately, in order for them to fund that care, we would have to surrender custody to the state. Oh, wow. So you see what parents are faced with? The insurances won't pay for certain stuff. So now they have to sign their child over to the state so that that child can get the treatment that they really need. And that's a decision that parents have to make. Some families, like butlers, give up custody when they run out of other choices. Other families report feeling forced into it or having the custody of their other children be threatened. That usually happens, yeah. It's unclear how often this happens because most states don't keep track of the numbers. One study showed at least 12,000 families in 19 states had given their kids up just to get them mental health care. Imagine if you had a kid that was suffering from an illness, like leukemia, Butler says, and in one order to get the medical treatment that they needed, the state was saying, okay, in order for your child to get this treatment they need, they're our kid now. That's basically what we've been going through. Butler has been talking to state lawmakers about ways to fund care and keep families together. The Wines budget proposed doubling aid for family and children's services, which would increase funding for multi-system youth. Kids like Andrew, whose mental health issue puts them at risk of entering the foster care or justice system. My hope is that my colleagues will understand that spending this money now really helps avoid a lot of issues later, says State Representative Sarah Latourette. This isn't like if we don't spend this money on kids in foster care, now then we're going to save it down the road. Down the road, it's going to lead to increased costs and perhaps a lot of bad outcome for these kids. Connecting families with funding is the first step, Latourette says, but she cautions some of her fellow lawmakers who propose ending forced relinquishment altogether. So you want to end forced relinquishment when the parents have no other choice? That sounds wonderful, but the unfortunate end result of that could be these kids really have nowhere to turn to then. Exactly. Because if you want to force relinquishment, what are these parents going to do? Just leave them in the ER and go? Leave them on the street and go? Like, how does that work? 
For Julie Callahan, relinquishing custody was the last option for her son Jackson. He's nonverbal autistic and harms himself and others. He would put his head through walls. He put his head through my car window. Oh, smack. My glass cabinet. He's broken windows with his head, she says. He will bring his knee up to his face and he's broken his nose from doing that. Mm. After giving up custody of Jackson a few months ago, Callahan says her family is in the process of healing. Her youngest son has PTSD from the violence in the home. Nobody thinks about the other kids. I'm telling you, it does a number on siblings too. Callahan is still working to patch up the holes Jackson left in the walls. <sighs> right now, Jackson is in a psychiatric unit in Cincinnati. Callahan is waiting to find out what state he will be sent to for long-term treatment. Because she doesn't have custody, she doesn't get a say. But like Butler, Callahan is speaking up about state policy so other families don't have to trade custody for care. Custody for care is a big, big thing. And as you see, these two individuals gave their family situation, how, to ha how they had to give up their kid to the state in order for that kid to get the right care that they needed because their insurances won't pay for it. And now they want to even stop that you can relinquish custody. So what are these parents supposed to do? Like, let me know what you think about this situation in the comment because this is a little too much for us to handle and I hope none of my autism families ever have to go through this but this is a real situation that can happen and I just think that we need to be aware of it I hope this video was helpful and I'll catch you in the next one bye <music>